Hey Mustangs, welcome to your Friday edition of the Daily Update. I'm Katie Pratt. And I'm Shelby Fishman, coming to you from the Tony Peterson studio on the SMU campus. Let's get to the news. Dozens of people are dead and even more are injured after a stampede in Israel. That story tops today's Mustang Minute. 45 people are dead and 150 others are injured during a stampede in Jerusalem. Tens of thousands of ultra-Orthodox Jews in northern Israel were celebrating a religious festival when the event unfolded. Right now, the cause of the stampede <coughs> isn't clear, but some witnesses say they saw a row of people trip on stairs. That caused others to fall and begin the stampede. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is calling the stampede one of the worst disasters to hit Israel. A $35 billion water infrastructure bill passes through the Senate and now goes to the House for consideration. Both Democrat and Republicans came together to face the nation's aging water and wastewater problems. If passed, the bill would aid in providing safer drinking water to poor communities. The bill is only a portion of President Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure proposal that is still being discussed. New information in the sentencing of a former Minnesota police officer. Let's get the latest now from Erica Newberg, who joins us live in the studio. Erica? The sentencing for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is rescheduled for June 25th. The original date was June 16th, but was pushed back due to a scheduling conflict. Chauvin is guilty of second-degree unintentional murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter. Under minimum sentencing guidelines, this means that Chauvin is looking at at least 12 and a half years in prison. Judge Peter Cahill will decide if more years should be applied to that for his case. For SMU TV, I'm Erica Newberg. Back to you, Shelby. Thanks, Erica. North Texans are heading back to the polls on Saturday. And just because it's not November doesn't mean the races aren't important. Dozens of local races for city council, mayor, and school boards are on the ballot this year. Dallas is also holding a special election to fill a vacant congressional seat following the death of Representative Ron Wright. The winner needs 50% of the vote plus one. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. on May 1st. Voters will need an ID. The coronavirus forced thousands of stores to think quick on how to continue selling their products and still make a profit. Many stores have used social media to help consumers with the online shopping process, causing stores' e-commerce business to thrive. Here's what I recently found out from some store managers. Since the COVID-19 pandemic started back in 2020, e-commerce has been booming within stores across the nation. The month of March so far has been one of our best e-commerce months that we've ever done at the store. E-commerce sales in 2020 were nearly $800 billion, a 32% increase from the year before. But local Dallas store owners quickly realized that using social media has been the key to increasing sales online during a time when shoppers aren't coming into stores as much. Right when the pandemic hit, we kind of snuck in here and just started doing social media. Once COVID hit, we really started uh, seeing how much like social media affected our sales in a positive way. Many local Dallas stores are using platforms like Instagram to boost their e-commerce sales. I'd say a good bit of our business does come from our Instagram. Using Instagram stories has been helpful to local clothing stores, so they can post trendy and new items for consumers to buy through social media. We have like a huge consumer base on our stories. We really like to focus on our stories and then really like good content for our feed. With technology advancing, consumers can actually use social media to buy clothing straight from the platform. A lot of people will go through our Instagram, click our Instagram photos, and then get to a website that way. So yes, they are using our website, but it is predominantly through our social media. Local Dallas stores are bringing in the online sales with the power of social media. We've actually found ever since we were closed for COVID and then even from reopening back up that We've had a lot of girls even find us through Instagram. Using social media to purchase clothing and other items online is a great way to support a local business near you. Beginning this summer, cruise ships will set sail for the first time since the pandemic began. The CDC says cruise ships will be permitted to sail in the U.S. waters by midsummer, given that each ship meets vaccination guidelines. 
Cruise ships will be required to have 95% of its customers and 98% of its crew members vaccinated. If you're fully vaccinated, life may start to seem a bit more normal. SMU TV's Lauren Rangale explains in this week's Coronavirus on the Hilltop. Hey Mustangs, welcome back to Coronavirus on the Hilltop. I'm Lauren Rangel. This week, Americans are getting another glimpse into a post-pandemic world. The CDC is easing face mask restrictions for fully vaccinated people. SMU Dr. Arthi Krishnan explains the new guidelines. As of April 27th, the CDC updated their guidelines on recommendations for fully vaccinated people and what activities uh, fully vaccinated people can participate in. So again, just the definition of fully vaccinated is two weeks after receiving your second dose of Pfizer or Moderna or two weeks after receiving the single dose of Johnson & Johnson. And that at that point, you're considered fully vaccinated. And so at this point, fully vaccinated people can be outdoors safely without a mask. The one exception is if it's a very large gathering of people outdoors, such as a concert or a parade. So free to roam the, the world without a mask if you're fully vaccinated outdoors, <laughs> um, except for in a large gathering of people. Now, masks are still re recommended indoors, you know, salons, dining, but they're considered low risk activities. If you have not been vaccinated, indoor activities still remain at medium to high risk and masks are still uh, highly recommended. But for fully vaccinated people, indoor activities are now considered low risk and masks are still recommended. But so far it's showing that the vaccine can prevent acquisition of the illness and even spread of the illness. So it's looking good. The change comes as the nation surpasses 140 million first doses of the vaccine. The SMU Health Center says they've delivered more than 2,500 shots. The university plans to lessen the restrictions over the summer until school can return to normal in the fall. This is my last semester here, so thank you for watching Coronavirus on the Hilltop every week. For the last time, pony up and pony out. More than 80 SMU students meet on Zoom during an SMU mental health event to hear the story of college athlete Madison Hollerman. Hollerman was a college freshman at UPenn who struggled with mental illness. She lost her life to suicide in 2014, but more than six years later, her family and loved ones are still telling her story and fighting to pre prevent suicide in other teens and young adults. The virtual event took place on Thursday night and was funded by the SMU Coswell Leadership Program. It was definitely an important thing to have someone come in who has something that deep and emotional to talk about that people could relate to, especially surrounding social media. During the event, Hollerman's sister reminded students that social media highlights are not the whole story of someone's mental health struggle. She also addressed destructive perfectionism, anxiety, depression, and suicide warning signs to look out for in friends and loved ones. And that's your Mustang Minute. You just have fun and sing. It's like living pitch perfect on campus, which is like, so awesome and it's real. Bell Tones is an acapella group of girls that just came together because we love music. We have a couple of music majors but mostly non-majors and it's purely out of a love of it and loving each other. If you have any experience singing, if you were like in choir in high school, this is such a great outlet to do something positive. To learn more about their events or how to audition, visit their website.
Hey Mustangs, I'm Katie Pratt with your five day forecast. Make sure you have an umbrella handy because the rain will be around all weekend. Friday will have rain showers with highs nearing 70 and lows in the low 60s. Rain will stick around on Saturday with highs in the low 70s and lows in the mid 60s. The rain won't go away just yet, but it'll start to warm up. Sunday will have rain showers with highs around 81 and lows nearing 70. The sun will finally come out on Monday and the high will be in the 90s. It'll cool off a bit on Tuesday with highs in the mid 70s and lows in the mid 50s. So keep your umbrellas handy, Mustangs. It'll be a wet weekend. That's your five day forecast. I'm Katie Pratt. This is Kennedy Hayes here with your weekly roundup. America is on the move again. President Biden marks his first 100 days and gives his first formal address to a joint session of Congress Wednesday. The address drew 27 million viewers and was the first time in U.S. history a populist pitch has been made. And the first time two women have sat behind the president, Vice President Kamala Harris and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. The president unveiled his American Family Plan, pushed his American Jobs Plan, and called for a new health agency. Health officials across the country have started giving out the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine again. This comes after a 10-day pause to investigate super rare blood clots some people got when they received the shot. Fully vaccinated Americans might be able to visit Europe this summer. President of the European Commission said people who got the Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson COVID shots will be allowed to travel freely within the EU. And in India, COVID cases continue to rise. The country is running out of essentials like oxygen and hospital beds and is seeing over 300,000 new cases per day. Before the second wave hit, health experts said India was starting to relax a bit. And experts say the rise in COVID cases could be a result of those eased rules and contagious new variants going around. India is the world's biggest producer of vaccines, but only about 1% of the country is fully vaccinated. The U.S. has pledged to send medical aid. More than a year after 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery was chased and allegedly killed while on a neighborhood jog in Georgia last February, three men are indicted on federal hate crime charges in an attempted kidnapping and have pled not guilty. A trial date has not been set. Destructive storms slam North Texas as Gulf-sized hail causes damages to roofs and cars, breaking windshields Wednesday night. Northern Tarrant County, including Keller and South Lake, are among the hardest places hit. Some residents are still recovering, but more rain is expected to hit North Texas over the weekend. A very eventful morning occurred outside of a news station in Colorado Springs Thursday. A young bear was spotted in a tree just hanging in there. When Colorado Parks and Wildfire Rescue arrived, they had high hopes that he might come down on his own. Eventually, after being tranquilized, the cub came down. Officials report he did not have any injuries from the fall and is headed back to the mountains for now. That's your weekly roundup. I'm Kennedy Hayes. Hundreds of people named Josh gathered this past weekend over a viral Facebook joke. Men across the country met in a Nebraska park and battled the name out with pool noodles. The winner of the battle was a four-year-old referred to as Little Josh. But the humorous event wasn't just for laughs. $8,000 was raised for the Children's Hospital and Medical Center Foundation Center in Omaha. Well, that's all we have for you, Mustangs. Remember, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash SMU television and follow us on Twitter at SMU TV. If you have any story ideas, shoot us an email, SMU TV at SMU.edu. Thanks for watching this Friday edition of the Daily Update. Be sure to tune in next week for more news from the Hilltop. Until then, have a great day and pony up. SMU TV and the Division of Journalism want to thank our underwriters, North Park Center in Dallas, Javier's Gourmet Mexicano on Cole Avenue, and Advance ER off West Lovers Lane. We appreciate your support of student media.